can RFK Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr., defeat the media? Kevin Barrett, senior editor, Veterans Today, says, I wrote Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in 2020 to send a message, this time it's serious. Running against the media and politics is like betting against the house and gambling. The odds are against you, to say the least, he says. I know that from personal experience, having run for Congress on the 11 Truth Platform in 2008, but it is not just me. There are countless examples of campaigns whose outcomes are determined by the media's slanted coverage. To cite an example, big media's decision to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story. Now, the power of the mainstream media is such that almost no serious politicians, people whose goal is to win, not just to make a statement or call attention to neglected issues, as I did in my 2008 run, ever dare to take any positions or voice any sentiments outside of the media's overton window of acceptability. The major exception to that rule, of course, is Donald Trump, who defeated the media in his 2016 run for president. Trump's method was deceptively simple. Keep saying outrageous things that the media won't be able to resist deriding and deploring, generally calling attention to. Lo and behold, the hoardy bromide, any publicity is good publicity, came true. Trump recognized that huge tranche of voters was angry and alienated and ready to support someone in establishment obviously hated. And since he had a Twitter account at hand to tweet his side of the story, Trump was not handicapped like pre-social media politicians who had depended almost entirely on corporate-owned, one-too-many media to communicate with voters. What's more, turning his rallies into countercultural festivals, allowing him to speak directly to throngs of people. Between Twitter and the Trump rallies, it became obvious that the media's most important way of suppressing outside the Overton window candidacies, fostering the impression that only a tiny, widely hated minority of French conspiracy theorists would ever say or believe such thing was not going to work. And Trump composed his triumphant 2016 election symphony in the key of invective, scapegoating, demonization and hatred of, or righteous anger if you prefer, though not all of it was righteous, his needling and insults which included allusions to alleged complicity of George Bush 9-11, Ted Cruz's father, and uh, were refreshed to those of us who have discovered the almost unimaginable corruption of the American political establishment. Trump did not keep his promises, though, concerning Hillary Clinton and the rallies chanting, lock her up. He didn't lock her up, and he did not drain the swamp. He stalked it. His administration offered no meaningful change except for completely surrendering to the ultra-extremist agenda having to do with Netanyahu, Trump failed to withdraw from Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan. He didn't terminate NATO, but instead armed Ukraine to the teeth and set the stage for the current war in Russia. And his administration nearly started World War III three times, once by Syria, once by General Soleimani, and once by the uh, Wuhan uh, bioweapon COVID. Though he failed to even attempt to dismantle the establishment, Trump's erratic words and behavior made him a destabilizing factor, so the consensus of the oligarchs was that he had to go. To defeat Trump in 2020, the media and its oligarch owners had to go full totalitarian, and they began by spreading a lie that Trump had been elected because Russia had somehow taken over the internet, and that provided the exclu to the excuse the establishment needed to impose a draconian regime of internet censorship that would have been unthinkable just a few years earlier. In the wake of the 2020 election, a new freedom-free information regime was erected over the smoldering ruins of the Trump administration and the First Amendment. Trump's entire project turned out to be suspiciously convenient for the oligarchy he supposedly hates, and thanks to Trump, they got what they wanted, more war, more wealth transfer from bottom to top, draconian internet censorship, and hyper-polarized polarized nation full of angry people fighting about things the oligarchy doesn't really care about. So did Trump accomplish anything positive? Yes, he showed it's possible to run against the media and win. And let's hope and pray that lightning strikes twice and that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. can pull off the same trick. How Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s run against the media will differ from Trump's. 
RFK Jr. enters the 2024 presidential race, far more hated by the media than Donald Trump was at the beginning of 2016. Before that campaign, Trump was cast as a relatively benign buffoon, a rich talk show host with a bloated ego who might add some entertainment value and boost ratings, but who had no realistic chance of winning. The fact that the establishment misunderestimated Trump allowed him to sneak up on them by the time they knew what hit them, it was too late. RFK Jr., unlike the pre-2016 Trump, is a known threat to the hyper-corrupt wing of the oligarchical establishment. He carries a mythic Kennedy name with all the baggage that implies. He's repeatedly made it clear that he knows the establishment murdered his uncle and father to terminate and prevent their presidencies. There's absolutely no chance that he's going to sneak up on anybody. Today's communication environment, especially the internet, is not nearly as free as it was back in 2016. The great majority of Democratic voters have been subjected to trauma-based mind control. Now, so compared to, trauma, to Trump in 2016, RFK Jr.'s 2024 run begins by finding itself behind the proverbial eight ball. Just days after his announcement, the media has already ganged up on him. More and worse will surely follow. So is there even a ghost of a chance that he could win? A superficial overview suggests it's almost unthinkable, but allowing for the possibility of surprisingly rapid changes in public opinion, a phenomenon for which there is some precedent, I submit that RFK Jr. could conceivably pull off a miracle along the lines of what his uncle John F. Kennedy nearly accomplished in 1963. James Douglas's JFK and the Unspeakable by other sources makes clear the astounding shift in public opinion and to some extent electoral politics that JFK somehow inspired, beginning with the American University speech of June 10, 1963. JFK managed to push through the limited nuclear test ban treaty during the summer and fall of 63 in the face of initially overwhelming opposition from the establishment and its media. Public opinion also began as hawkish and anti-treaty, but by appealing to people's better nature and mobilizing his charisma to inspire, JFK first swung public opinion, then Congress, and he signed the treaty October 7, 1963, six weeks before his assassination. RFK Jr., if it is to have a chance at winning the presidency, he'll need to emulate his uncle's summer of 63 miracle by inspiring a radical shift in public opinion through a charismatic appeal to people's better natures. So to do so, you'll have to employ the polar opposite approach uh, from the one Trump used to, uh, against uh, the media in 2016. Instead of fighting back with nasty incentive and scapegoating, Bobby will need to return love for hate, return truth for lies, and relentlessly focus on the positive and inspirational while the media piles on with its negativity and cynicism. Could that work? Yes, it might, just as people were sick of the media's anodyne bullshit BS in 2016 and found Trump's verbal aggression refreshing. Today, more and more of us are sick of not only the lies which grow more outrageous every year, but also the complete lack of any idealistic or inspirational vision. The media, including social media, have put us in permanent emergency mode in which the world is always about to end. Now, if anyone is the man for the job, it's RFK Jr. Besides the vision thing that comes with the Kennedy name, he embodies a refreshingly non-polarized perspective. Though a Democrat, his critical thinking and activism uh, resonates more with Republicans, and he wisely avoids entanglement with oddities of gender ideology and cultural Marxism in general, instead trying to find common ground with a sensible middle. And as he told Epoch Times, he says, America is enduring an apocalyptic tribal polarization, more toxic and dangerous than any time since the Civil War. And while Democrats battle Republicans, elites are strip mining our middle class, poisoning our children, com com commod uh, commoditizing our landscapes. I will focus my campaign not on the issues that divide us, but the values we have in common, he said. Wow, that's crazy enough that it just might work. And the fact that he's running against an ever more uh, sleepy Joe Biden, just as the economy will be heading seriously south, just adds to the impression 
that anything could happen. And the writer says, by now I'm sure many readers are thinking, but even if Bobby pulls off the kind of miracle you're suggesting and somehow becomes what the bad guys will consider an actionable threat to assume the Oval Office, won't those same bad guys just whack him the way they whacked his dad and uncle? Not to mention his cousin. It's obviously a possibility, but to my thinking, it just adds to the aura of courage and heroism that surrounds his decision to run for president. To shrink from supporting his wholeheartedly because uh, he might uh, uh, might be off would be churlish. If he's willing to put his life on the line, the least a decent person could do is line up behind him. And um, so just as RFK Jr. won't be able to sneak up on the establishment the way Trump did in 2016, the establishment likewise won't enjoy the element of surprise if some of its members decide to terminate or prevent the presidency of yet another Kennedy. And the more support he has from people who know the score, the harder it will be for them to think they can get away with it. RFK's junior's run for presidency is admittedly a long shot, but whether or not you think he has a chance, his campaign is by far the most positive current development in American politics, and I agree with him. This is by Kevin Barrett, Substack on uh, Veterans Today. Foreign Policy, please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.